Welcome to another episode of the Tough Stuff Podcast. Be sure to like, love, share, or subscribe wherever you may be watching or listening because we believe that God wants to bring encouragement and hope to people through these stories. What's up, world? Welcome to the Tough Stuff hey, Podcast. Welcome back. Episode two. Take three. Take three. <laughs> Hopefully we get it this time. We just put our daughter for a nap. So the time is counting down. Know, you know, gosh. we've got to get this thing done. I hope we can do it. Before she wakes up. <laughs> Uh, but we're just excited to be here. And once again, we just want to thank you guys for so much thank support you. from last week and, you know, giving me an opportunity to share my story, what God's done in my life. And man, just the feedback has been awesome. The followers, the shares, it just means so much to yes, us. Thank you guys so much. And we're excited about this podcast. We're excited to see what God does with it, what God does through it. And man, God is just faithful. You yes, know? I just feel like there are so many stories even in everyday life where people are encountering God in miraculous ways, whether it's, you know, a diagnosis and a hospital visit or, um, or just something in their, in their life that addictions heal, marriages heal. Yeah. And it's like, I, I just want to give God uh, space yeah. where we can tell these stories and help other people tell their stories so that God's glory really, really shines. And I feel like we've gotten a front row seat to that. We've been privileged to that over the past few years, working for a church, working in a church. And, you know, I hear it all the time in the church. People are like, man, we just want the, the miracles of Acts back again. And, and they don't realize that if you really look at the context of the book of Acts, it was over 30 years and there was a miracle recorded like every few years. And I feel like we see more than that just in our day today. I feel like we do. And we just don't have an avenue that those are being shared. Like there's, yeah. it's like you don't, like in Acts, you can pick up the Bible and read. Um, and there they are. But with everyday life, with people's stories, it's not often that, you know, if there's just no better platform, I think, than the podcast. No, it's going to be great. Know? And God is in the details. Yeah. So we're going to have so many people on this lineup of people just come and share what God's done in their life, the hand of God in their life. Yes. But we thought uh, today there was, we we're almost obligated at this point. You know, I got an opportunity to share my story last week. And, you know, I've been kind of trying to nudge Allison maybe. and I didn't want to nudge too much. Uh, but then God did. So we're here today and we get to hear from my amazing, beautiful wife of, just what God has done in her life and how we ended up here today, you know? Yeah, here we are. You know, I think when you think about um, God doing miracles and just the work that God does, um, I feel like uh, God's had to do a lot of miracles in our life in yeah. order to, like, make us function in society. Like, I feel like we've required <laughs> a lot of work um, from what we both have been through. And so um, it's an honor to share my story. Um, I think uh, when I was in middle school, I grew up in a stable home, you know, had both parents, um, which is so ironic, um, the differences between your story yeah. and my story, how you came from, you know, single mom home, poverty, um, well, I came home from came from a middle class family mm-hmm. um, where everything seemed to be normal, and so um, you know I remember being in middle school and uh, having my first crush on a boy. Oh. And so don't don't worry. A little jealous. <laughs> What's and, his name? <laughs> and so I just remember um, from that point on just being fixated on this um, this idea of having somebody, Mm. you know, finding love. And, um, and unfortunately for many years, uh, that, um, determination put me into some really, um, unhealthy relationships and some really harmful relationships. And so I, uh, I was kind of that girl that just always dated somebody, Mm -hmm. you know, like, have you ever seen those where, you know, they're just like, I dated so many people and, if there was something I didn't like, that, I broke up with them. Yeah. And I, I hope none of them are watching this podcast. <laughs> don't take it personal. <laughs> don't take it personal. I was so, um, just 
unhealthy and immature back in the day, you know, and so I just remember being so hungry for attention and love, and I was kind of shy, so I wasn't um, very outgoing, like I didn't get like, um, like this outward attention from like the masses because of an outgoing personality. I was very quiet, very shy, um, and so I think I craved like that same level of attention, but from a significant other. Mm. And so, um, so that drew me into some relationships that just didn't go very well. You know, there were some, um, some betrayal relationships. Wow. There were some um, just unhealthy, some rejection relationships. And when I got to high school, I was so um, on this, fast journey of got to find somebody, got to find the right person, got to find somebody to fill my cup um, that I just was started dating. I really started dating anyone and everyone. Wow. I would date, you know, guys. And I didn't have any, um, really any specific type of person that I wanted. I just was like looking so hard for anybody, somebody. I would date guys. I dated girls. Mm. I dated... <laughs> Why did you? Mm, <laughs> so awkward. So hard. But I, you know, I really came to this place where I, like, if you would love me, I was willing to be with you. And so, um, unfortunately for for me, that that became like this desperation that um, caused me to be willing to do anything and everything. Like it, it was like, if you'll be with me. Um, I'll stay with you even if you're going to cheat on me or wow. even if, you know, you betray me or reject me. Like, if you're going to love me, like, one day, then I'll lock in and be, yeah. you know, loyal. And so what ended up happening was I found myself ultimately in an unhealthy relationship with a girl. Mm. And um, it was very... Um, emotional there was a lot of rejection there there was a lot of um, betrayal and cheating and you know I was so at this point in my life just so tired of that yeah. chase so tired of looking for it and not finding it so tired of feeling empty mm. all the while like having somebody and then breaking up and so the heartbreak and just the, yeah. the cycle of you know, teenage uh, relationships, I feel like, where um, you don't really know what you're committing to whenever you get into a relationship, and then you don't really know what is going on in your heart whenever, you know, you get tied to somebody, and then they break your heart, and then you got to start over, mm -hmm. and then, so I, I, that was me, like, yeah. you, you were the guy that was, you know, breaking the law and doing all the things, I never went to jail. Just, I couldn't get a date though. I never got a date but, until like senior oh, year of high never, school. You never dated. Anybody. No, no, oh, I God. was too scared. So you're you're like breaking the law. I've never been to jail. I I like <laughs> I've never done anything wrong. Break the law is one thing. Talk to a girl is another thing. <laughs> Much scarier. But see how different our stories are, and yet we both had that sense of emptiness. Yeah. Like we were both chasing, chasing, chasing. Um, something that kept leading us to yeah. nowhere. You Which know? is so crazy. I think that's part of what our marriage counselor always talked about as being so uh, interesting, such an interesting couple, because there's no way in the world like we should have even crossed paths. To think that, <laughs> you know, you came from a two-parent home, man, your parents owned businesses and were very, rather successful compared to mine. And you know, we went to two different various schools, two different, very, two very different schools. <laughs> you know, you grew up going to a private school, mm -hmm. all girls school. Mm -hmm. I went to just whatever school was around the neighborhood, you know, <laughs> and I was at a different school every two years. But to just see how God, you know, used these different paths to bring us to the same broken place mm -hmm. yes. to end up bringing us together. So cool. Oh, that's going to be a hilarious and amazing story when we tell our story of how we got together. But I just, um, I remember finding myself um, so empty and it was like so depressed. Um, nobody loves me. Mm. Um, nobody cares. Um, nobody, um, 
is going to take care of me. So there's, there must be something wrong with me. Wow. So then it, it went from nobody cares to I'm a failure. Mm. I'm less than. I'm not valuable. Which is what shame is. Shame. It was so much shame. You know, there's nothing I can do to make anyone love me. Like, there, there, it's obviously the problem is me. Wow. And so I remember being in my apartment bedroom. I was at LSU at the time. And I was dating a girl um, and, and, and that relationship was just unhealthy and it, and it was just ending in a, in a bad place. I felt like I was being mistreated and so, but I kept going back. And mm. so, you know, I find myself like in this cycle, um, where I don't know what to do. And so, um, I remember being on the floor. I was just devastated, just crying out to God because I, I, I just didn't know what to do like it, it was literally like I didn't I didn't know how to pray yeah. I didn't know what to say I didn't I just remember I think my prayer was God you have got to give me enough strength to like get up yeah. like it was like give me strength to like get through this situation and you grew up Catholic they don't teach you to pray that prayer in Catholic. I, yeah we yeah I it was like that whole um idea of like talking to God, I had not done that yet. Yeah. And so, um, so that was the first time that I really, you know, prayed to God and asked God wow. to help me. It was like I was in dire need of yeah. help. And so I'll never forget that night because it was like, it was like he put me on the operating table mm. and opened up my heart in all of the broken places that were there yeah. and performed surgery yeah and put me back together and you hadn't grown up with any experiences of like church camps or these no. pentecostal church services no, 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 charismatics no. or anything no, like that no we we grew up catholic it was a lot more traditional um than than those kind of yeah. environments so i had this moment where i felt like god came and met me in my apartment room yeah. in Burbank um, at LSU and healed me right there. Wow. You know, um, I had battled with, you know, do I like guys? Do I like girls? Do I like, who do I, what, what is all this? And I felt like um, for the first time in my life, um, God just gave me a sense of confidence in myself mm. And made me realize that all I wanted was him and yeah. his help. And he was there. And so it was like in an instant, I felt the healing, wow. the freedom. It was amazing. That is wild. And not to harp on you being Catholic, but I, I wanted to share that because I feel like, you know, a lot of times people can think we just hop into this uh, belief in miracles because we've seen it or we heard it in these church services that we should have these things happen. Mm -hmm. But this happened to you with no preconceived notions of mm -hmm. God's ability to do that in your life mm -hmm. or, you know, that feel anything, you know? Yeah, just... I mean, we always learned about God, but, but I had never, at least for myself, I had never really encountered God, Yeah, you know? And so... This was like me in the most desperate moment of my life. Mm -hmm. um, like, God, if you don't do something, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Yeah. Like, I think about the story, Job, not to cut you off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> not, but like Job, you know, through the whole thing, he says, fine. At the end, once he sees God's redemption and faithfulness, he says, I have known of God my whole life. Mm -hmm. But now I know God, yes. you know, to go from hearing about him to seeing him yes. in your own life. It's like he picked me up off the ground and he set my feet on solid ground. Yeah. And I've not been the same since. Yeah. You know, I, I really, um, I feel like today in 2024, one of my, um, more one of my strengths in life right now and Brianne always, my friend always calls me the what ifer because I'm yeah. always like, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this yeah. happens? But I feel like um, because of my moment with God that day, um, faith is something that comes like so natural yeah. to me. Like I, I'm like, if God can pick me up off the floor mm -hmm. and um, make me 
healed and whole uh, when I was at my actual worst point in life, yeah. then I believe God can do anything. Yeah. Like there's nothing to me that is impossible because to me that was impossible. Yeah. Like that, no, that sure. situation. Cause there I was, you know, I was dating a girl. Mm. I like never imagined that I would date girls. Yeah. Like, it's not like I, you know, went into it thinking, you know, I'm going to date girls. Like it's mm-hmm. just the way that my desperation and, um, just my ch- the chase for love and yeah. attention, it brought me to that place. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I always wanted to get married and yeah. have kids, get married to a man. And I, and so in, on top of like the heartbreak, I found myself in a very, um, confused place because I almost was, uh, like foreign to myself, mm. you know, like I, I almost felt like, um, I don't even know who I am. And, yeah. I, and I often would say that or feel that very strong, even growing up. It's like, I don't even know who I am. And so whenever God lifted me up that day, uh, and, and helped me and healed me, I, I have not been the same yeah. since. And so what's so interesting about that story is that um, it wasn't like, you know, I was praying, God, you know, take this away from me. Um, Let me be straight. Mm -hmm. Like that was not um, like the cry of my heart that day. Um, That day, my cry was help. Yeah. You know, and so often I feel like people... um, think we ought to come to God um, Mm. and say, you know, take this sin from me or take this behavior from me or, and really and truly all we need is him. Yeah. All I needed in that moment was him. And I think so many people stray away from the church because we see this uh, sanitary Christianity where like, you're not allowed to cuss. You're not allowed to do this. You're not, you know, you got to have it all together. But then we read our Bible, and these people lived lives very wild. You know, you yeah. look at David. I mean, he was the one after God's own heart. You're talking about murder, adultery, all these things. But to see just God's faithfulness, you know, it's not about you living this perfect life. He just wants you. Yes. You know? Yes, it's like um, so often we can get caught up thinking that Christianity is about behavior modification. Mm. And of course, the closer you get to God, the holier and the more pure that you become. And that is the goal. Yeah. But I think that God so desires us. Yeah. Like he, he was less interested in let's get Allison to stop dating women than he is let me just have her heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he, um, and, and, the, and the funny thing is when you're desperate, that's what you want. Like yeah. I was so desperate at that moment. It was like, I don't, I can't think of anything else that would help me. Yeah. You know? And so, so where did you go from there? Oh, where did I go from there? So, you know, I, I had a moment where, you know, God, I encountered God. Then I was like, I changed my entire, my whole life changed, you know, it's like in that moment, it was like God transformed me. So my desires changed, mm. you know, I stopped dating unhealthy people. I stopped dating people in general. Cause I was like, I am in no place to date anybody. Even <laughs> like, when we started dating, you had yeah, already, you no, weren't supposed to be dating. I was like, this has gone too far. <clears throat> yeah. Like if it's up to me, I'm going to take this the wrong way. So I, came out of that and decided I'm not dating anybody. Like I need Mm. me and me and Jesus. And so, you know, not long after that, I enrolled in Bible school at Healing Place. And so that's where we actually, um, ran into each other again. again. And that's where our relationship culminated and became, um, whatever we are today. But, um, (laughs) but I, I had this period of life where I was like, um, a child at the feet of Jesus learning like mm. how to live for him, like for the first time ever. Yeah. And That's so awesome. I remember, um, you know, I, I went on every outreach that the church had. So like, um, my 
best friend Tori was over the outreach team. Yeah. And so we would go to nursing homes. We would go to the inner city. We would go to the homeless uh, shelters. We would go all over the city um, and serve. And that, cause yeah. that was her, that was her job, but she was my first friend yeah. at the church. So that became like my identity for a little while, uh, while I was navigating that season of life. And so I'll never forget just the amount of joy that I found in helping other people. Yeah. You know, it's amazing what can happen when you take your eyes off of your problems mm. and put them on uh, somebody else. We have so many stories from that season where we can both say a name, and whether it yeah. be a nursing home resident or a, an inner city kid or, you know, a homeless man mm. that there's, we can say a name and that we'll both remember that name and know yeah. what God did that day. Um, and so I just remember being so, um, like focused on God and it was like, I was just a different person. Yeah. I craved different things. Like at that point I no longer craved a relationship. Yeah. Like I, wasn't even interested. I was like, look, I got to, you know, get myself together. You gave me the runaround for quite some time. Yeah. I was like, I am too broken to, you know, be going after another relationship, you know? And so, um, I just remember feeling like a, a child, like yeah. a child at the feet of Jesus, just watching his every move. And we, we would just do all kinds of things. So. Which I think is like the goal. I think that's the way we should live our life, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just so sad that our brokenness and the holes in our heart, even though we came from two different backgrounds, mm -hmm. two different places, mm -hmm. you know, God just had to wear us down. He's all yes. about the long game yes. until we get to a place where we're willing just to give him a blank canvas and yes. say, right as you will. Yes. You know, we think about it. We talked about that last week. You know, we get our identity from our father. Our identity is who we are, what we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. you know, our purpose and calling in life. Mm -hmm. And he will wear you down from different yes. corners of the world yes. to get to a place to give him a blank canvas so that he can write that story. You know what's crazy is, you know, the night that you, I just imagine you from last week sharing about, you know, um, either in the jail cell or you're in the ferry terminal and your life has just gone too far. Mm -hmm. I bet we had the same feelings yeah. Like the night that I cried out to God, the yeah. night that you cried out to God, mm -hmm. I bet the feeling that we both had independently was yeah. the same. Yeah. You know, that, that feeling of emptiness, I've ruined my life, mm. you know, what, what do I have to the live feeling for? feeling of surrender. Yes. Yeah. I bet you it felt the same. That's so crazy how you hear me from two different backgrounds from two different stories. There's nothing that our stories have in common. Except for the fact that we had, both of us had some of our most broken points in life. Yes. In New Orleans, in the city of New Orleans, <laughs> yes, you yes. know? And then God bring us back to Baton Rouge and kind of heal us up and clean yeah. us up, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's good to share also that, you know, and we'll get into this in more detail whenever we share our story, but because of my history with unhealthy relationships, I mean, I dated, like you went to jail 25 times. Yeah. I must have dated 20 people. Yeah. Like I probably dated 18 guys my, during my upbringing. If you dated Allison, <laughs> comment on this somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> I would be mortified. I mean, I, I was dating everybody. Yeah. Like it wasn't. Exclusive I think we that. all just we find ourselves in these places that we would never want to be mm -hmm. Just trying to find uh, that a feeling for that void that yes. we're all created with, you yes, know, that is so crazy but um, what I was gonna say is what's what's interesting is how I brought You know all of that shame and the insecurity and all of that into our marriage. Yeah, and so um, Not yeah, like but yeah <laughs> no, like, like I, it, you know, we both did. Whenever you, whenever you have broken things in your past, if you don't find healing from those things, mm. you'll bring them into yeah. your next season and relationship. And so, you know, quite a journey was it that we had to go through, um, 
unraveling mm. both of our pasts. Yeah. And I think that's um, going to be a very uh, juicy episode. <laughs> 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 because, you know, There's a lot. just having to yeah. unlearn things and, um, yeah. And that's just the picture of Lazarus. You know, Jesus says, you know, get up which he did in that room, you know, yeah. but then there's an unwrapping, you know, and he uses his people, God's yes. people and resources and therapy and those things yes. to do that unwrapping, you know. Yes. so good. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, I have, I don't even know if I've gotten like the whole thing in one <laughs> sitting, you know, so it's just so much to digest, but I think it's so relevant, you know. Mm. I think we still live in a place where, you know, that's why we're excited about this podcast because the world is darker than it's ever been. Mm. But in a darker room, the light, brighter a light can shine, yeah, so you know, good. and yeah. people are finding themselves in that very similar place that, you know, doing whatever they can to try to find love and mm. find acceptance. And, you know, I'm sure plenty of people watching this are very much in that same place or know somebody in that same place. And, you know, that's what we just want to be, man, trophies in God's hand that mm. people can see and realize, hey, if he did it for them, he can do it for yeah, me, too. It, it's like just how crazy it was, you know, I was um, participating in this lifestyle because I made a decision to, but it wasn't bringing me joy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, so often in our brokenness, we can participate in things and choose to do things that really don't help us or yeah. bring us joy or um, give us peace. And so... What I ultimately realized on that journey was peace is only found in Jesus. Yeah. There's yeah. no supplement. There's no Why are you pill? getting all my supplements and my <laughs> pills, man? <laughs> I don't know why I went there first. There's no relationship. Like, even you cannot give me peace. Yeah. And then we're well aware that I we can give I tried for a other. long time. <laughs> but it, there's no, there's nothing but Jesus. And even after meeting Jesus for the first time, you know, the past 13 years of my life, it's always been like, because we still end up trying to find it in these other things and mm. supplements and whatnot. But God always brings always, us back. Yeah. His presence him. is like nothing else. Nothing else. And so I wouldn't trade it for the world. I I would go through everything that I went through. I would I would do everything I did over again if it meant that I, on that day, would encounter God yeah. the same way. Man, I love you, babe. That's <laughs> awesome. So, hey, thank you guys for tuning in, checking this out, man. We're just so excited to get, man, for God to get his glory. You know, he deserves it. He's This is not about us, although it feels um, awkward to me. I feel yeah. awkward yeah. because I feel like it's it can come off like we're trying to get glory yeah. Um, or we're trying to get this spotlight. Mm. And the reality is that God has impressed on us to create a platform for him to get yeah. glory. And so, yeah. Awesome. Well, we always say on this podcast, our new line is that life can be tough, but, but God, God is, is still, still so good. good. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Tough Stuff Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope it inspired you, maybe built your faith, gave you some hope, and encouraged you today. And if you know somebody that needs to hear this story, go ahead and share this with them now. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode.